Welcome back to another episode. Today I want to talk a little bit about uh, the, the steel foothold trap. You know, they kind of got their start in the 1850s. Oh! All right. Let's get started with this timeline I made. I'm only highlighting the more common brands, manufacturers out there. I know there are more than what's on this list and more than what I'm going to talk about. I just wanted to highlight the main ones. <clears throat> um, so to start out with, trade kind of started in North America. Um, kind of in the 1600s, the Europeans came over and were kind of exploring um, Canada and, and more so the western part of the United States. Um, and then, you know, of course, Lewis and Clark came through, you know, in the early 1800s. Trapping was pretty basic back then um, during this time, the 1600s, 1700s, 1800s, um, the use of deadfalls, snares, that kind of thing. The steel foothold trap, as we know it today, got started with a guy named Sewell Newhouse. And uh, he was kind of an everyday guy. He uh, was a blacksmith by trade, uh, lived in New York uh, by the town of Oneida. And uh, at some point, there was a, they called themselves a community, but it was kind of a religious cult, moved kind of next door to him, two miles away from him. And he got acquainted with this cult and actually became a cult member. Um, and he kept tinkering with these traps and uh, the, the community would use the traps and, and pretty soon there was a demand from outside of the community for these traps. Um, so lo and behold, in the mid 1850s, uh, the community decided to produce the traps um, uh, at a full production and within you know a few years they were selling hundreds of thousands of these traps a year um, so that's kind of where the steel foothold trap got its start so these traps were sold as Oneida community traps um, that was the brand name and uh, in 1886 they came out with the Victor line and uh, as you very well probably know Victor is a very popular trap and uh, the Victor traps were designed and marketed to be more of an affordable trap uh, for the everyday user and uh, you can about imagine they're essentially the only uh, trap producer in North America the sales just skyrocketed so that is the Oneida Victor trap Blake and Lamb is a uh, another fairly common trap they got their start shortly after Oneida did, 1859. Sargent and company were in business for only a short time, got their start in 1884. This next company is not a producer of foothold traps. It got its start as a mouse trap company, the animal trap company, um, produced mostly mouse traps, but they did produce some of these choker traps. They were called the thief stop traps. And uh, they were basically a trap designed to kill the animal um, instantly by by choking them similar to a conna bear, which wasn't invented until the 1950s. So I just wanted to throw that in there. Triumph Trap Company got its start in about 1916, 1915, somewhere in there. Um, kind of a sleazy company. They started out with the name of something similar to Oneida Community Traps. It wasn't exactly that. It was something similar to resemble them. Um, and actually, I believe the creator, uh, the founder of the company worked for the Oneida community and they also ran into troubles with the Gibbs and Son Company um, they were kind of stealing some of their um, I, I don't 
know exactly what it was, if it was the design or, or the name, um, but they didn't weren't in existence very long, about 15 years or maybe 15, 16, 17 years, and they just ran into a lot of legal trouble. W.A. Gibbs and Son. Gibbs was a retired railroad worker. Um, he did a lot of muskrat trapping up in the marshes up in the northeastern part of the United States. And uh, I, I think the Gibbs and Son traps are just great traps. I have, I have one. Um, they are heavy duty traps, and I, as far as I can tell, they were the first coil spring traps on the market. I, I can't say that for sure, but as far as I can tell, I don't see any coil spring traps um, before the Gibbs and Son. So the Diamond Trap Company got its start in 1923. They were only in business for less than a decade. Um, they were produced by Norwich Wireworks. Okay, let's go back to the timeline. What I want to point out is that there was a lot of activity happening in the trap manufacturing world from say 1880 to 1920. Uh, there was 40 years there where th things were going crazy. Uh, a lot of new startups and uh, a lot of buyouts, a lot of um, sellouts. Uh, Victor, o Oneida Victor bought, bought up some companies most notably the Animal Trap Company, that was a large company that Victor bought out, and, and I think they bought out some others as well, um, such as Triumph. But uh, we're gonna head over now to post-World War II by quite a ways, and we're gonna talk about the Herders Trap. Herders was a company that um, sold a variety of items kind of through a a mail catalog. I would consider it somewhat like a Sears catalog, a little bit of everything, um, hunting and fishing stuff included. Um, they have had been around a very long time but didn't start making traps until 1967 um, and they continued to make traps until 1979. Northwoods got its start in 1976. They are very similar to today's Bridger Trap. Coincidentally, they were also manufactured in Taiwan, which is also where the Bridger Trap is manufactured. I do believe, and I could be wrong, but I think that the Northwoods Trap is the first trap manufactured outside of North America and sold in North America. Bridger is a very popular trap today. It got its start in 1985. Duke got its start about the same time in 1986. Also a very popular trap on today's market. The last trap is Minnesota Brand, and they are a very popular trap. They have also purchased the Bridger Trap Company at some point over the last few years, and so they are under the same umbrella. Well, there you have it. That's about 12 trap manufacturers in the last 160 years, um, the more popular ones that I'm aware of. Um, few things I wanted to point out is that these are, like I said at the beginning, these are steel traps for foothold traps. The Conabare trap was invented in the late 1950s by Frank Conabare. Um, th that's a whole nother gamut of traps. Um, also dog proof traps really are popular nowadays and, and not so much until you know, maybe the early 1990s, late 1980s, uh, they're actually, someone invented kind of a reverse trap um, that you could use on a, say, a number one long spring, and it reversed it by not having, instead of pushing down on the pan, 
uh, the trap pan would have to be lifted up before it would fire and so there was a kit you could buy that would um, do that for you um, but I, I didn't get into those there's a quite a few different manufacturers for those as well this was mostly for steel foothold traps the one last thing that caught my attention when I did this cheesy little timeline is when I thought about the fur boom of the late 1970s what kind of traps were people using to catch say the fox and the mink and coyotes um, you know I obviously Victor would have been around um, some of these other trap companies may or may not have been around uh, were people using mostly Victor traps to do all the trapping I'm surprised that there wasn't a big trap company that started mass producing traps when the fur boom of the 70s was going on well that's going to do it for the video today i hope you enjoyed it please like and subscribe if you did thank you